turns to shit, okay? It's true. Welcome to the Dragon Ship. I'm Thor. Skull. Poured myself a nice drink today. Let's raise those horns. All right. It's going to be a little bit more of a relaxed message today. An opinion piece, which I'm going to broadcast. Quite controversial, but hey, I'm an old guy. I'm a bit of an a-hole, so it's good. I think it'll be great. Let's stir it up. See what smells. Gentlemen, members of the Dragon Ship, public at large. We have been faced with some interesting changes in the last few years, and I want to talk about it. The change in language. Language changes over time. I know that it does. We all know that it does. There's been an interesting change in language in regards to relationships, male, female, male to male, work relationships. You know, I've watched a real weakening of masculinity over the years, both physically, emotionally, spiritually even. One might say it's a conspiracy to rid the planet of masculinity and letting men be men. And I'll say maybe, maybe not, but definitely there's a pressure to not allow men to be men. And there is a whole lot of education out there that is denying men their birthright to be men and have successful relationships with men, other men and women. What do you mean, Thor? Well, I mean, as of recent, I've noticed a tremendous amount of social media, YouTubes, videos, even in conversation, there is this demand for men, particularly young men finding their way, to be vulnerable. And it's the only way they can find their authentic self. And I was thinking, I got into a little bit of a oh, discussion, potential, a small debate on what vulnerable actually means. So we're going to go through it today and see if... My understanding of vulnerable is the understanding that you should take, or is it the new one that was created around 2018, 2019? And I'll show you with some screenshots where it came from. And uh, feel free to debate it with me. But uh, I think you'll find it quite interesting, particularly the Dragon Ship members that are trying to better themselves and are faced with confusing advice from the so-called experts and those that would charge you a fortune to set you into an office and tell you that you need to be vulnerable in order to become your authentic self. Well, Thor says, bullshit. Let's get into it. So let's start with the definition of vulnerability. Why is it so popular to tell a person, if you want to be masculine, you must be vulnerable? Okay, fair enough. What does vulnerability mean? Let's go back to the original definition, not the definition that was created just a few short years ago. And here we go. Let's look at the definition. Vulnerable. It's an adjective. Now, this is Merriam-Webster's dictionary. And it's saying it's quite updated. And it says right here that the essential meaning was easily hurt or harmed physically, mentally, or emotionally. Okay. Uh, to open, attack, or damage. Fair enough. Full definition of current. Vulnerable is capable of being physically or emotionally wounded, open to attack. So how is it that if I'm open to attack, I can become my authentic self? Interesting. Uh, let's scroll down just a little bit and see oh, the history of vulnerable. Well, let's see what they say. Vulnerable. Let's go ahead and write this out. Vulnerable is uh, ultimately derived from the Latin noun vulnus, which is to wound. Oh, so vulnerable is to wound. Okay, interesting. Latin verb vulnere, meaning to wound. And then Latin, Latin adjective vulnerabilis, which became vulnerable in English in the early 1600s. And originally meant capable of being physically wounded or having the power to wound. Now, notice that it states here, the latter is now obsolete. I'm going to show you that the first 
understanding of this comes out of our university system. About four or five years ago, they want to change the meaning of this word. And they're doing it in such a way as to where we refer to ourselves and our interactions with others. Why would we be weak or able to be wounded by others? What is the advantage of this? And it's becoming quite popular in uh, self-help circles. I'm going to point out where I vehemently disagree and choose to uh, go the other way with some folks that have very good information but have bitten this vulnerable bug and decided that it's a part of their vernacular now and that they're going to preach to other men to be vulnerable, which I completely disagree with. I think that's absolutely wrong. I think what they truly mean is that they want them to be, shall we say, a little bit more um, empathetic. I think empathetic is exactly what we're looking for here, not vulnerable. Anyway, we can get into why they change language and particularly why the left and the progressives and the woke is responsible for this change in the term vulnerable. Okay. Uh, so very, very interesting. Let's take another look here at another definition. So we go to Google and it says, what does it mean, vulnerability mean? The definition of, of vulnerable is easily hurt or delicate. So to be my authentic self, do I need to be easily hurt or, 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 or delicate? It doesn't make me very attractive, not only to other men who expect me to have their back, particularly in a, in a profession that I was raised in, which is power line work. No, no, no. They want me tough as nails and to watch their back. Their lives depend on it. This is not something I would ever show up and perform work doing. It would never even come close to being my authentic self. I hope it isn't for you either. An example of vulnerable is an animal with no protection from its prey. I find that very interesting in the fact that the woke crowd wants us to be vulnerable. Could it be that they view us as an oppressor or prey? Very Marxist, in my opinion, for sure. An example today is person who is easily hurt by criticism. Well, whatever happened, you know, to sticks and stones might break my bones. But words can never hurt me. Does that even exist? Does anybody even consider it anymore? A question somebody asked in Google, and I, I looked at it right here because I'm not the only one that's asking. Is it good being vulnerable? Many people grapple with vulnerability. If you tend to keep things bottled up or ignore problems, it's important to learn how to be vulnerable. Why? Why? What does that mean? How, how does bottling things up be equate to vulnerability? It doesn't quite get it. Oh, wait, this, is, this was published August 29th, 2019, about the time they changed the definition in the popular culture of vulnerable. Hmm. And there goes on. It goes on and on. And here we are looking at the dates of these things, definitions. Uh, and it, all around 2018, 2019, we get this strange sense that vulnerable no longer means to be wounded or to be able to be hurt or weak or delicate. Very, very interesting. And of course, since uh, that has entered popular culture, we can go right to an article that I found here. Oh, where was this? Oh, this is pretty new. Updated on July 2021. And medically reviewed by Lisa Fritcher. Recovering from the fear of vulnerability. Oh, you should not be afraid of being vulnerable? I don't know. I kind of don't want to be delicate. I don't want to be hurt. I kind of got a little bit of a fear of being hurt. Why wouldn't being wounded or hurt cause you to be cautious, um, particularly if it's physical or even emotional in some regard? I mean, aren't they equating the two here? Sure. Very interesting. Now, here is this professor, author Brene Brown, suggesting that vulnerability is an important measure of courage and that it allows people to be seen and understood by people who are important in their life. Being vulnerable also serves as an important way to foster authenticity, belongingness, and love. Uh, who the F says that? Unless vulnerable doesn't really mean vulnerable. Uh, when you can accept 
vulnerability, I'm assuming for yourself, accepting that you're delicate and you can be hurt, you have greater strength. Wait, if you're, if you can be hurt and you're delicate, that is more strength. You didn't work out. You didn't prepare yourself. You didn't emotionally bolster yourself. You did no actions except to say, I'm weak. Maybe I'll cry. And you are stronger. I don't know. <clears throat> we might be in a strange time. We might even be in an alternate dimension right now. So they say that putting yourself in situations where you feel vulnerable can be a way to gain confidence and belief in your ability to handle and challenge situations. Now, that's a bit of a different statement right there. I don't know what it has to do with being vulnerable. It has to do with you rising to the challenge of your fears and conquering them. Why would you put it in this framework? Just don't know. I disagree completely. Stronger relationships, being vulnerable with others in a way to foster intimacy. It can deep your compassion and empathy and connections to others in your life. How? How is being weak? How is being delicate, unable to handle things, actually help you develop stronger relationships? Don't you mean being empathetic at the right time or even being somewhat sympathetic or even sensitive? Vulnerability definitely does not mean those things. I just showed you on the definition. Yet there are those that write articles like this that express the fact that they want us to. This is a psychologist. This is a change. And I showed you where they're changing it. Very interesting. And they're saying that advan uh, examples of vulnerability is taking chances that might lead to rejection. Look, that's just life. You have to take a chance from day one. Nobody owes you anything, not even life. You have to hit the ground, learn as much as possible, and start running. Can others help you? Absolutely. That's why we're social creatures. But that's becoming durable. I would never advise someone to be vulnerable, be their authentic self. I would advise you to become durable. That is your true authentic self, the ability to... Uh, uh, to be durable and tough and be able to handle situations and bounce back and put on that smile, take a deep breath and, and, and say, here we are. We got through it. I'll take another. Let's go. How is that bad? It's not. It's the way to live life to the fullest. You only get one shot. Let's go. Why would I want to sit in the corner and be vulnerable? Let us continue. I mean, what does, Sin, uh, what does Sun Tzu say? Ancient Chinese uh, philosopher on war. What does he say about vulnerability? Well, let's take a look at a couple of things he says, and then we can kind of guess at what he might think. Um, first, learn to become invincible. Then wait for your enemy's moment of vulnerability. Wait. He's telling you to become invincible, possibly durable, and prepared. And then you wait for what? Your enemy's moment of vulnerability. I have psychologists and I have people in this sphere telling you to be vulnerable in your relationships. Why would they weaken us? Why would they put us in such a subjugated position? Makes one think, doesn't it? Why would the feminist tell us to be vulnerable? This is a big part of feminism, modern feminism. Be vulnerable if you want to be a real man. Show your weakness? Hmm. I don't know. Food for thought. I certainly don't believe them. Invincibility depends on oneself. The enemy's vulnerability on him. Oh. You know, Sun Tzu also said something interesting that might be related. He said, when facing the enemy, when you are weak, act as if you were strong. And only when you are strong may you show weakness. For thousands of years, that's hold true. Why would it not now in any relationship that you have? It's not telling you to lie. It's not telling you to be inauthentic. No, it is the truest of who we are. It is the most authentic. Mark Manson. The man wrote a ma an amazing book called Models. Some of the best advice you can get out there on role modeling, bettering yourself and becoming a better man and having some good advice on relationships. When I read this article, I was crushed. Here's a guy that has good knowledge and 
even acknowledge that this has become a buzzword and yet embraces it fully and tells men that they must be vulnerable and tells you how. Guys, this is off the deep end. This is just for popularity and to ride the common popular craze and try to get more hits. I can't believe this. Uh, you know, the link will be in the notes. Read this thing. He says it might sound hokey and new agey, but it is. It's very woke. And he's telling you to connect with others by being vulnerable, by being weak and delicate. You can connect to others. How about let's just take a look at what empathy actually says. Why not just be a little bit empathetic to others so that you can understand who they are and be sensitive to their needs. You can hold a dominant mask in a frame and still do that. There's no reason you couldn't. Let's just take a look. Okay. What does empathetic mean? Oh, showing the, uh, the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. Why wouldn't you want that versus being vulnerable? That's going to connect you socially with so much more because you'll understand. And when you understand, you have understanding, you can have compassion. And that doesn't make you weak. That makes you extremely strong. Why would you not embrace something like this versus what Mark Manson was telling you to be, which is weak and delicate in your relationships? Don't do that. And I see other guys in this manosphere that has nothing to do with being a manosphere. That's like womanosphere stuff. Uh, while it might be quite popular and attract a large audience to sell things, uh, if you really want to be strong and you really want success in your relationships, work on yourself. Become empathetic to others so that you're not a self-centered a-hole like I am sometimes. I try not to be, but, you know, it is in my core. Aside from that, it is a practice of mine to become more empathetic towards others. And it's a lifetime's worth of work. I don't mind because it is that important uh, for me to do to fulfill my role as a masculine dominant male in the society and be able to give back and pay forward to young men how they might behave correctly with others in their life. Not be weak, but be able to hold others up when they are weak and show some leadership to themselves, to the others in their life, to their women and everybody that they come in contact with. Uh, yeah, so I was really disappointed in looking at this article. I couldn't believe it. I definitely part ways when it comes to this. Uh, of course, it's advertising what he is, and he's telling you what vulnerability really is. And it is the modern version that we just looked at that has come up in popular culture. Um, he says vulnerability is consciously not choosing to not hide your emotions and desires from others. I just read you the definitions. It has nothing to do with this. You know, coming out of our universities, our psychological departments is they're telling you to be vulnerable, but what did it really mean and what does it mean? And they only recently tried to push this bullshit on us just a couple years ago. Why do they do that? They want you weak for a reason. Think of what Sun Tzu said, waiting for his enemy to become vulnerable. It hasn't changed that fast. Another thing you might consider rather than vulnerability is sensitivity. The quality and condition of being sensitive. Yeah, just don't overlook what others are doing, thinking, or feeling. I think this is truly when you're in a relationship, what is asked for from the opposite sex. Just be somewhat sensitive. I'm not super good at it, but you know what? I recognize the value in doing that and not being, you know, insensitive at times. Transparency. Transparency might work too. You know, be transparent and honest in all things. Now, I will say this. Honesty is 100% the best policy. Full disclosure is not. You can hurt people by just disclosing whatever's on your mind unnecessarily. Why would you do that? Your back is square one. But honesty is the best policy. Be smart about it. Um, yeah. So... I wanted to kind of close this one out just to give you some food for thought. Let's look at this link from thefederalist.com just so that you understand about the modern definition of vulnerability and why it's being pushed in every quarter. How the left manipulates the war on words. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'll leave it to you in the, uh, in the comments down below. 
but it's it's interesting to realize that definitions are always changed to push an agenda or a thought forward that it was not intended to. Remember back in the 70s when bad meant, meant good. Instead of saying good, you said bad. Things do change in popular culture. But that is not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is essentially uh, politically correct speech and why it's done to uh, manipulate power and power centers. So, uh, yeah. So take a look at this. It's out there. You'll understand. Vulnerability isn't on this particular list, but it talks about in just the last five years how much language has been changed in the media proper and in the social media circles. There, there is a definite move to change how we use language to confuse people. People confuse, don't push back, and they don't resist change. It's just true. They don't. Uh, we've gone from an era where we had uh, HR would, uh, you know, broadcast uh, a lot of woke stuff in corporate culture. They'd say, hey, you know, this is uh, diversity and inclusion. Okay, great. Diversity and inclusion. It looks like a good thing. Well, it got a little bit of a bad taste out in some circles, and now they're changing the name. So when things don't go according to plan, the name gets changed. You'll look across corporate America now, and while there's still some diversity and inclusion, most of it's being changed to cultural literacy. Cultural literacy, is what a benign thing to say. Wouldn't you want to be literate for your culture? Of course you would. Do you know what it really means, though? What is cultural literacy broadcasting? Is it equality or is it about protected classes? When we had classes of people, wasn't that kind of discriminatory? We had upper class, middle class, lower class, the poor. Well, it is about protected classes. Equality? Yeah, maybe. Maybe it's more about equity. That term gets used a lot. Look it up. Equity is quite, quite interesting. Anyway, I'm just asking the Dragon Ship members, be educated. Don't be vulnerable. Look, if you're weak, act as if you were strong. Because when you do, you tend to wake up, look around, and you're strong. And that makes all the difference when it comes down to it. So, anyway, thought we would have a nice little chat uh, for the Dragon Ship. Guys, we're coming up on it. Uh end of the month and remember the second tuesday uh, of every month at 4 p.m pacific time there's a dragon ship meeting mastermind meeting for a couple hours it'll be on zoom you can definitely purchase it here at uh, becomedurable.com and you can subscribe you won't find a better value anywhere uh, out there right now where you can get together with men and discuss men's issues and help each other become better men and thereby you can help all around you become better versions of themselves. That is the goal. Hope to see you there. Uh, until next time, skull.